Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Christian Swartz, who authored the book Natural Church Development, together with his team conducted an extensive investigation into the matter of spiritual gifts. And this took place in over 7,000 churches in approximately 50 different countries. Here's a couple of amazing statements that came out of that investigation. First of all, he said, Our research shows that there is no other isolated factor that has a stronger bearing on your effectiveness than living in accordance with your gifts. And then he went on to say, A survey conducted by our institute amongst 1,200 Christians yielded a shocking result. 80% of those surveyed had no idea what their spiritual gift might be. Only 20% indicated that they knew what their spiritual gifts were and used them. My question is, do you know what your spiritual gift is and are you operating in that gift? This is Set Free with Ken Legg. And I'm Phil Edwards. And we're looking this week at the subject of ministry gifts and some pretty staggering statistics that we've just heard there, Ken. No other isolated factor has a stronger bearing on your effectiveness than living in accordance with your gifts, he said. And 80% of those surveyed had no idea what their spiritual gifts might be. 80%. True. And remember that this was the result of a very extensive survey. And that's why, of course, Phil, we're dedicating this week to talking about ministry gifts and trying to help people to discover what their gift might be. Now, in Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through to 8, Paul speaks about spiritual gifts. Now, let's just um, take the first verse. He says to them, you know, on the basis of all that Paul has taught about our salvation in Christ, I I, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Let's just say, for example, um, a preacher comes to a church, he's been invited to speak, and he preaches on that text. He says, now, if you want to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, I want to pray for you. Maybe you stand up and I'll pray for you. So everybody stands up and he prays for them and they sit down and, well, that's it, you know. But, well, has anything really happened? Have they presented their bodies? I mean, what's, what's changed, you know? So the following week, another speaker comes along and he doesn't just preach on that first verse. He goes on to the next verse. Uh, which says that, um, uh, you know, that God wants us to to discover what is that good and perfect will for our lives. So that's how you present your body as a living sacrifice, by doing the will of God. So he says, now, if you'd like to do the will of God, I want you to stand up and I'll pray for you. And, And so people stand up and he prays and they sit down and then they ask the question again, well, how do we do the will of God? You know, how do we present our bodies to do the will of God? But then somebody that's a bit more enlightened comes along the following week and he preaches on the whole of that passage. Of course, Paul then goes on to say, if you want to present your body as a living sacrifice, if you want to do the will of God, the way to do that is to discover the gift that God has given to you and use that gift. When you do that, you will be doing the will of God and you'll be able to present your body as a living sacrifice to God. And that's why Paul says, come to a sober estimate of what your gift is, Mm. and then you can function in the will of God. I love the way that uh, Paul writes um, in uh, Romans, in the whole book of Romans. In fact, it's a a really great book. But I've got another version here that says, be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. You know, it all points to this is all from God. Yeah. Yeah, Our gifts, um, and we've talked about things like administration or mercy or prophecy or whatever it might be, but the gift of faith that God has given us. Yeah. And, I mean, this is a really serious subject, probably more serious than, than people realise. And I've, I've got to be honest here, Ken, I don't necessarily like self-evaluation. And I think there's mm. probably other people that don't like that either. Yeah. But, but that's what Paul is saying here. We need to actually yes, evaluate. He's saying that very thing, yeah. yeah. Uh, just to get back on your, your other point there, but, you know, th- these are things that God has given to us. You remember we mentioned uh, yesterday that um, the word gift, of course, is a translation of the word Charisma, from which, yeah. uh, you know, it's grace. We, yeah, we can't get that from the word charis, which is a grace. So it's it's not something that we've produced or that we've manufactured, but it's something that we've received as a, a free gift from God. But yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, uh, it is a ser- serious subject, and uh, uh, and yet we did say earlier on this week that there's nothing more natural 
than discovering your spiritual gift. It's not a big deal. It's not a reward for the super spiros. Um, it's, it's something that is so natural that, you know, we can't really miss it um, if we really want to discover what that will of God is for our lives. Mm. So once we've got to that point of self-evaluation, we understand what the gifts are that we have, that God's given us, what do you do with it? Where, where do you go with that next? Okay, I, I believe that one of the things that um, uh, is operative here is that we receive a burden that's tied up with our spiritual gift. Let me explain that. I mean, come back to myself. I, I can only relate it to myself. Um, I'm a teacher, so I get burdened when I hear the Word of God being taught out of context, mm. when it's made to say something that it's not really saying. And so that's a burden. Now, that burden goes with the gift. I mean, that the gift can correct the burden, the, the problem the burden produces, which is wrong teaching, erroneous teaching, you know. Or, or let's take another example. Uh, we talked about, you know, the gift of mercy. Now, the gift of mercy is quite a broad gift, but it's basically a gift that's focused upon people that are suffering. So some people have a gift of ministering to those that are drug addicts, for example, okay? And so their burden is for drug drug addicts. They have a tremendous heaviness of heart for people that suffer because uh, of their addiction, and, and that is in accordance with their gift. So the two go together. So we do receive a burden that kind of lines up with that gift. Yeah, we often see that where people are just so passionate and, and aware of a particular issue in society or a group of people or an injustice that's going on or whatever it might be, and they're, they're advocating for that cause and frustrated because nobody else gets it. You know? Yeah. And, and that's, that's I'm so grateful that we have those people, that God has given them yep. the, those burdens uh, and things that they you know, advocate for. Yeah. Uh, just on that last point, though, you made the definition between a gift and a ministry the other day. If I remember this rightly, you said the gift was the function and the ministry was the sphere in which that that function sort of operates. Yep. And I, I suppose that would be a good example of that, where the gift is mercy, the ministry is to drug addicts. That's right. Yeah. And, 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 you know, on that whole area of uh, getting a burden, okay, for, so, so the, you know, somebody with a gift of mercy has a burden for drug addicts because that's their ministry. Mm. If they only had a burden, it would crush them. So the next thing is that they get a vision. They get a vision of what good their gift can do to to minister, to relieve that suffering. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, to come back to myself again, uh, I said that my burden is for the Word of God that is taught correctly. And then I get a vision of how we can do that, you know, different ways of bringing out books and CDs and DVDs programs like this and TV and so on, and the possibilities are endless, you know. And so you start to get a vision of where your gift can take you mm. in terms of relieving that that need or, or meeting that burden uh, that, that you're feeling that's in accordance with your gift. Mm. I guess that ties into something we've talked about previously too, about uh, giving your worries and everything else over to God because if yeah. you have a burden for something like this, you could very easily just become quite despondent about the whole thing. You know, if you, the other world's got so many drug addicts, what can I do, you know? Yeah. It seems like what I'm doing is of, is of no use, but you give those worries over to God or how is he going to provide for this thing that he's placed in my heart? You know? Yeah, well, sometimes you, you, you may be the same, Phil. Uh, you, you know, you do observe people that are in ministries that they're not really called to and it does crush them. They just can't take the weight and the need and the burden of it all and, and they're crushed by it. Uh, and then they step out of that and they, they get into a ministry that they are gifted for and the grace of God is upon them for that. Because, uh, as I say, if we just had a burden without a vision and without the empowering uh, that the grace gift brings to us, then we're not going to be able to cope or to function. But, but we know that we're called because God enables us and empowers us to function, to go a long way towards meeting the need that that burden Represents, mm, And you just said something really important there, that he empowers us, he enables us. He doesn't call us to do something that he doesn't yeah. give us the ability to do. That's right. And we'll have more for you tomorrow as we look at discovering our spiritual gifts. Until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage because God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg and details about Ken's ministry, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au.